Sophie from Marmalade Kitchen in Rose on Sea. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to make a very special four tiered rainbow cake. The reason why I'm going to show you this is because Hope House and T. Gobbyth are running a very special competition. It's a bake off competition virtually um, due to the obviously current circumstances and um, it's going to be part of their Eat Cake Week, which I think is coming up around about October half term week. So we're going to do the cake and let's get baking. So the first thing you need to do is obviously weigh out your ingredients. I'm going to, it's a, it's a traditional method um, and it's following a probably Mary Berry, I would say, originally recipe. And we've just adapted it a little bit for the Victoria sponge mix at uh, Marmalade Kitchen. So the first thing we're going to do then is weigh out our main ingredients. You're going to need 300 grams of flour, self-raising flour, 300 grams of caster sugar, and 300 grams of a uh, stalk or some kind of baking uh, margarine. You will also need six medium-sized eggs and two teaspoons of baking powder. So that's your main ingredients that you need for this cake. Traditionally, I would have said for you to kind of um, mix just the margarine and the caster sugar together and to blend that in the good old old-fashioned method. But because I'm using my KitchenAid and because most of you have probably got fancy kitchen equipment at home, you it literally is just to bung it all in, in the um, mixer, um, cake mix and stick it on and it's all done. Okay, so I'm going to weigh out my flour first, pop my glasses back on. You need 300 grams of your self-raising flour. powder so two level teaspoons of baking powder just going straight on top of your flour again you can sift your flour and you can sift your um, baking powder if you want to I very rarely sift them um, but obviously if you are a lot more professional perhaps than I am you might want to do all the sifting as, as well the next thing I'm going to weigh out is 300 grams of caster sugar I'll just pop that straight into on top of the flour. There we go. And then on top of that, we're going to add our 300 of, this is stalk, but as I say, it could be any um, baking margarine at all that you want to use. That's a little bit over generous there with the margarine, perfect. Pop that in. There we go. And then you need six eggs. So my eggs here. If perhaps some children are taking part in the Bake Off competition, virtual Bake Off competition, they might want to just crack the eggs into a separate cup um, rather than going straight into uh, into the mixing bowl, um, if just if they feel a little bit more confident doing it that way so they don't get any eggshell in. I'm just going to go straight into the mix. Two. A couple of broken ones in this bowl here. Three. So in our bowl, if you want to have a quick look, you've got your flour at the bottom, cast the sugar on top of that with your baking powder, your stalk, your soft margarine, baking margarine and your six eggs. Okay, that can then be mixed now for approximately two to three minutes. If you're using a little hand mixer as well, that's fine, it's not a problem. 
or if you're using a wooden spoon and the good old beating method, that's good too. Just would probably need to mix it for a little bit longer if you're using um, a wooden spoon and the hand mixing method. Um, this is obviously a lot quicker. Be sure not to flick it on right up to the um, high speed, otherwise you're going to end up with flour, sugar and everything else all over your kitchen. So I'm just going to start it off quite lightly just to blend in all those ingredients together. Starting to come together nicely. Now it's looking a little bit more doughy. I'm going to spin the mixer right up. So that gets a good mix with the, the paddle. is mixed in nicely you can just push it all down with a spatula or a cake spoon if you haven't got a spatula or a wooden spoon and I'm just going to do that and probably stick it on for just another 30 seconds while that's whizzing away for another 30 seconds it might be worth you just having a look at the ingredients and the method that is printed here now I know that um the team will, Hope House and Teagobath team will be obviously putting this on their website, www.hopehouse.org.uk. And on that website, you'll be able to find all the information about the Bake Off competition and how you enter. Okay, so I was going to flick that on for another 30 seconds. Right? It's lovely and creamy. Um, it's gone a lot paler, so it's not as as yellowy as it was uh, when we first started mixing it, and a lot less doughy. So I'm just going to scrape some of that off the paddle here. Get as much of that mixture off because you're going to need it for your for cake tin. Sure there'll be somebody in the household waiting to um, enjoy the paddle or the whisks, whatever you've uh, whisked your cake mixture with. So I'm just going to pop that to one side there. Okay, the next bit's slightly trickier and you might need a little bit of help if again there are children having a go at this Bake Off competition. You're going to divide the mixture between four separate bowls. Okay. And the reason for this is because, obviously you're doing a re rainbow cake, you're going to have four separate colours and you're going to have to change the cake mixture to those four separate colours. So the best way, I'm, I mean, you can weigh it out, you can have a bowl, you can weigh out and make sure that each one is um, exactly right. But what I tend to do is just take a, a, a good dollop on the spatula of the cake mixture, pop it 
in each of the four bowls. And then just go back round again. You could probably do another full one of each one, two, three, four, and then put maybe just a little bit, as I say, if you're, if you're perhaps slightly younger, you might need a little bit of help dividing some of this up between the four bowls. to one side. There we go. So you've got four separate bowls of your cake mixture and all we're going to do now is just add literally a couple of drops of each of the um, food colouring. It's very very pink this one so you don't need very much. I'm using, um, these were recommended to me actually by Natalie who does a little bit of baking for us at, at the uh, at Marmalade Kitchen. These are Pro Gels and the reason why she suggested these is that they don't um, kind of take, change the consistency of the cake mixture. Um, whereas sometimes with actual food colourings it can actually do that. Now I'm only going to add that much to the mixture. That might even be a little bit pink. Uh, more pink than we want it to be. Okay, I'm going to go for the green one next. It's very messy. I always end up with cake mixture or food colouring all over me. And I drop things as well. Okay, so just a little bit of green. We'll have a look at the green once we're um, once we've mixed it a little bit. We might add a little bit more to it. Um, it's it's I say drops, but it's harder to do drops with the gel. Some are runnier than others. And then the blue. You need very very little of this one. When we had a practice run, it actually turned out incredibly dark the blue. So I'm trying to be gentle with that one. Okay. And then you need to be patient mixing these because obviously what you don't want is for any of that cake mixture not to have the blue colouring, or the pink colouring, yellow colouring, or, or green colouring added to it. So you're just going to have to be very patient, making sure that's all folded in. So I'm just folding it underneath and then whisking it through lightly, trying to make sure that we maintain and keep that air in the mixture as much as possible. There we are, happy with that one. Okay, so that's our blue one, we'll have a little bit there. Okay. So as I say, if you're using liquid food colouring, you might find that obviously your cake mixture goes a little bit runnier because of it. Um, but that's fine, it will still bake the same. It's just that these Pro Gels help to keep the consistency of the cake mixture. You see how vibrant those colours are though, considering how little I used um, and how, li what, how little I added to the actual mixture. That's our green one coming together nicely. Lots of washing up when you're making a rainbow cake. Okay, and the pink. I love this pink. Again, it's probably could be a little bit darker than we want it, but into the actual cake mixture. Look at those beautiful rainbow colours. The colours obviously from um, Hope House and Tea Gobby. Okay, so there's your four 
colours. So the next thing you're going to do is obviously transfer those to your cake tins. I'm just going to scrape those out. There we go. I'll end up with multicoloured fingers by the end of this whole uh, process. So there's your blue. And all we're going to do is just push your cake mixture to the edge. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat because when you put your cake mixture obviously in the oven, your cake mixture kind of melts a bit and moves about in the in the bottom of the tray and expands, etc. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just try and push it to the edge. I am going to just however get rid of that little bit that I've got around the top of the tray there. So there's our blue. I'm going to go for our green next. Actually, not washing up tonight, I know that. There we go. I'm going to spread all of this out. Right to the edge of the tin. There's a friend of mine who says, I'm a proper TV chef because I'm lazy and I don't scrape out the bowls properly. And I don't scrape off the spoon and that's what TV chefs do. So. Apparently I should be using a spatula and literally get everything out. Never noticed it myself. go. So there's our pink. There we are. Spread that one out ready. And finally the yellow. Aren't those colours just gorgeous? Spring like, and it's probably what we need. I don't know spring like it has. There we go. And yellow. So these are going to produce absolutely gorgeous, soft, spongy, spongy, um, ready for you to put into your tears. Okay. My hand again. So I'm going to pop these in the oven now for roughly 12 to 15 minutes. Um, but keep an eye on them because obviously everybody's ovens are different. I've got my oven on at 160 um, fan oven. Um, so obviously, if you're not sure, just check out what your temperature should actually be um, from the point of view of 160 Celsius, etc., that kind of thing. So I'm going to pop them in the oven for 12 to 15 minutes um, and we'll see how they are there, uh, how they are then. Blue and the yellow together I think, and the green and the pink. So now your cakes are in the oven, they're going to be in there for sort of 12 to 15 minutes. You can make some lovely icing um, to sandwich your cake together. Um, various ways of making icing. I'm going to again show you the icing that is famously used at Marmalade Kitchen in Rose on Sea. Um, very, very basic recipe. You can add things to it if you want to, but obviously that's going to be part of your show stopping creation um, in terms of perhaps colouring or flavourings and that kind of thing. Um, so all we're going to do is measure out. This is actually going to make quite a lot of icing. 
um, but depending on what, how you're going to actually decorate it, if you're going to ice the whole of the outside, for example, and layer it, you are actually going to need quite a lot of icing. So I'm going to make up um, 500 grams of stalk or soft margarine. And I do find, actually, I am going to say this for the icing, that stalk is probably better because it tends to hold... Um, when it gets warm, the kind of, it's consistency better. Um, some of the kind of cheaper margarines go, I kind of separate a little bit, that's probably the best way to describe it. So um, I'm using the stalk for the, for the um, icing. So 500 grams, as I say, is quite a lot, um, but what you don't use, I'm sure you can use on another creation. Um, and I will certainly use what I don't use today in other cakes at the cafe. So there's 500 grams of icing sugar, uh, sorry, stalk. Now you need a thousand grams of icing sugar. Get my little bowl will hold it actually. I'm gonna do 500 and then 500 because it might not hold it. A thousand. Okay, so there's 500. And with this, I'm actually going to add only a little bit at a time, otherwise, you do end up with a snowstorm. So I'm just going to add two or three. There we go. And what we do need is the paddle that we have with wash. adding more icing sugar to it. So if you want to, you could add perhaps a little bit of vanilla essence to it. Um, again, just a tiny bit because it's got quite a vanilla flavour anyway with the icing sugar. Um, or a strawberry maybe you want to, might want to add to it that might be quite nice with the rainbow layering I'll just add a little bit more I get very impatient when I'm making icing usually the uh, kitchen in marmalade it's downstairs it's usually covered in icing because I literally just throw it all in I'm trying to be professional here and show you how to do it uh, properly making big batches you uh, tend to just throw it all in. Okay. I'll pop that in on again and just weigh out another 500. Seems like an awful lot of icing doesn't it? Icing, but buttercream, I guess. Um, what you want is it to be quite silky, pale, um, so you're kind of almost beating, beating the colour out of the, the stalk, really. And obviously, with the with the icing sugar as well, that helps to whiten the, the mixture. Now. Um, I'm just going to leave that 
to really mix up the look of it. You can see that now it's starting to go a little bit paler in the middle. I'm going to just grab my spatula. Just beat that down a bit. So you can see a little bit of the icing sugar is just stuck at the bottom of the mixing bowl. So we want to get all that ice and sugar mixed in and make sure that there's no lumps as well. Um, again, you can sift your icing sugar, but to be honest, if you've got a good mixer, it gets most of the lumps out anyway. add a little bit of pink food colouring to mine. Um, again, we need perhaps a touch more than we have for the cake mixture because obviously we've got a lot more icing. That will probably do it. Watch this change colour. How pretty is that? Okay, let's just mix around. It's actually quite pretty like that, having some white in it as well, isn't it? So just how to do a very, very basic decoration. Obviously the whole point of this uh, virtual Bake Off competition is because they can't taste it, it is going to be very much based on the colour of your sponge, the texture or the look of the texture of your cake when you send your pictures in. It's going to be based on um, how well you decorate it and how creative you are with your decoration. So I'm gonna make mine really simple. Um, obviously you can copy mine if you want to, that's not an issue at all. But what we're wanting is for you to be as creative as possible. So I don't want to kind of influence you in, in any particular way. And apart from that, I'm absolutely useless. I can bake a cake, but I am absolutely useless at decorating cakes. So, you know, I know that whatever you do is gonna be 10 times better than what, what I produce now. But I'm just gonna give you an idea of how to sandwich the sponges together and perhaps what your finished product, product could actually look like. Okay. So on the very bottom, I'm going to put the blue sponge. Now when you look at them, obviously they're still in the oven here, you can't see very much of the coloring because you get just the, the cake texture really more than anything. And even if you turn it over, you don't see a lot of the actual cake. But if you feel that it's very light, it's very spongy, and hopefully yours will be just as good. So, here we go. Let's take this out. I'm going to put just some pink, a pink layer. 
you could be really clever and create a whole batch perhaps of different coloured um, icings and layer them cleverly with different coloured icings. That's, that's one idea perhaps you could use. So I'm just going to lightly spread that out. And can you see from the thickness of the sponge, they don't have to be really, really fat. We did, we did have a practice run and we made an absolutely beautiful cake, but we put far too much mixture in it. And it was like the leaning tower of Pisa, literally. It was, as soon as we cut into it, it was like, whew, just collapsed. So you don't want your sponges to be too thick if you're gonna be sandwiching four layers together. Okay, and the next one I'm gonna do is the green one, I think. But again, I think uh, the actual judges are going to be looking at how creative you are in terms of putting it together and putting your icing on and how you actually decorate it. So again, don't feel you have to necessarily copy me, but this is just the idea that we came up with in terms of um, the layers. Right, so that's our second layer. So we've done blue on the bottom, and then we've done green. Well, I'm beginning to smell that cake in the oven, and it smells absolutely delicious. There we go. As you can see, I'm not an absolute perfectionist when I'm icing cakes. But those of you who have been to Marmalade Kitchen know that they taste absolutely amazing. So there's not more important than them. Um, sometimes the look we can sometimes be really fooled by the look of something can't we but the taste is really important well it is to me anyway of the marmalade okay and then i'm going to pop the yellow on the top of it okay so you can see all the layers and your icing in between and then i I think what I'm going to do is put a layer, I'm just thinking on my feet here really, I haven't necessarily planned it, I just know that I didn't want to make it too fussy because I wanted you to be able to think for yourselves. But I'm going to put another layer on there, it's quite pretty that it's got a little bit of a mottled effect on the top there. You could of course also put some jam in between each layer. Because obviously this is a basic Victoria sandwich mix, so you could put a jam layer in between your buttercream as well. It's looking very indulgent though, isn't it? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my piping bag. Um, and I'm gonna do a little bit of piping just around the edges. I don't need a lot of it in the piping bag. I'm using a 2D nozzle, this is, for the bed. Be whatever you've got handy at home, it doesn't have to be this specific nozzle. These are the disposable piping bags. Um, I mean, what you need to do with your piping is make sure that you get as much air out in between um, all the mixture in here. Um, so I'm winding it right down, you can see that the mixture's starting to come out now. And then I'm going to just do little basic flower pipes around the edge there. There we go. And it might be when you get to this competition that it literally is just trying to find whatever you've got in your cupboard. It might be that you go out and find specific things to decorate it. And that's the nice thing about creating something like this for a Bake Off competition is that you're able to use your imagination and really go for a show-stopping cake at the end, okay? So that's um, my little creation. Now, what am I gonna do in the Should I do something in the middle? Should I check my cake? Oh, my cakes are fine. Yeah, I've just been told I need to check my cake, but my cakes in the oven are absolutely fine. And I'm just gonna do that in the middle, I think. Okay, so what have I got? Um, well, do you know what? As it's a rainbow cake, I think we're going to go with some of the uh, sugar strands. Just take that little bit of foil out. 
Oh, don't know if they won't come out. I'm gonna go with some sugar strands. And just, oh, that's pretty already. Give them a good shake. Excuse the squeaking in the background, that is Charlie, our golden retriever. want to come out in any great rush does it and there we go and then I bought earlier some super mini lemon meringues I won't say where they're from I'm just going to pop some pretty meringues on the top like that. and then one like that and one like that one like that, one like that, and one like that, and one like that. There we go. I should I say not an amazing decorator, but it looks super pretty, super pink, super pink girly cake. Now, when you um, take part in the competition, and when you send in your entries to the competition. Um, what they will want to see is obviously the finished product and how you decorate it, but what they'll also want to see is what your cake looks like when you cut into it. So here goes. I'm going to cut into my cake and let's see how it looks. Feels beautiful cutting into it, to be fair, really lovely. Nice big cake. A nice big slice here. There we go. Let's have a look. We can get it out. There we are. And that's your layered sponge with your buttercream. Missed a little bit of a blue bit at the bottom there, but pretty. Beautiful sponge. Nice and soft texture, sandwiched with a really nice creamy buttercream and enjoyed with a delicious cappuccino. Doesn't that look gorgeous? So, all that remains to be said is, good luck, have fun, be creative um, and if you want to find out more information Please do go to, I am going to read this so I make sure I get the information right. Please do go to www.hopehouse.org.uk and there you will find all the entry information, all the competition information um, for you to um, enter this competition. There we are and I'll just take that knife out and you can see how that cake looks in the middle. Now I know that there are going to be some absolutely amazing cakes produced far better than this and um, i'd probably like to see some of them on the marmalade counter to be honest but good luck have fun and enjoy happy baking mm -hmm.